Okay, I don't know about you guys, but I'm having a hard time being excited for this ISC. Uh, I, I'm just not excited for 323 anymore, um, but this is all the features of 323. So if you want to see what 323 would look like in a perfect world, I imagine that's what this is going to be. <laughs> that's that's my guess. So so let's watch this together. Alpha 323 is just around the corner, and that means it's time for Patch Dispatch 323, where we run down all the new features and content included in what could be Star Citizen's biggest patch yet. So let's just jump right into things. It was the biggest patch yet, and now it could be. So what are you going to push? The biggest patch yet for the next one? Is the next one the biggest patch now? It it is the biggest patch. It is. It doesn't have the most gameplay, but it absolutely has the most like changes and updated things and all that. It is absolutely the biggest patch. This is CIG replication layer test active. Yeah, and potentially problematic, I think. And we'll start with life in the first person. Yeah, the most and in cars. 323, life begins with a newly expanded and revamped character customizer, letting you create more dynamic and representative avatars than ever before. A new beginning that will continue to evolve with additional features and options in subsequent patches. Now let's discuss all the major improvements that directly affect your character, starting with the new Moby Glass. Now, unlike Eobard Thawne, we finally killed the Flash, as the new Moby Glass finally makes its in-universe debut with a revamped layout and new features like the Health and Contract Manager apps to help you stay alive and find work respectively. I, I still don't get the point of this yet, but maybe when radiation's a thing, I, and pre like, I don't know. Have you guys used this at all? Or do you still just go about the game the same way you're going about it? Med gun, things like that. Oxygen, 1100%. I saw that as well. Hmm. It also includes the long awaited and hotly anticipated new maps app, combining the new star map and interior map experiences <laughs> into one unified interface with an entire host of new functionalities designed to help you find your way through landing zones, space stations, and the entire verse as a whole. I, I gotta say the internal routing is actually pretty sick. And I think uh, current players who have played the game a lot are going to maybe overlook that more than your average player would that has never played the game before. And is like, where's the armor shop? You know what I mean? I think it's gonna be awesome. Oh, and that work also touches the new lens and visor updates with and a great new mini map that appears now in the- I'm sorry, even as a player who's played forever, I don't know exactly where the armor shop is on, on Arc Corp L2, right? So it, it's useful there as well. Even Upper for, left corner. For the average. Your days of not finding your way around are soon behind you. Unless you're a specific person who won't be named. You know who you are. Of course, when you're traveling through the verse, Alpha 323 has a whole new array of improvements to how you'll interact with the world around you, starting with a revamped player interaction system that's more nimble and... Oh, uh, you know, I've never customized a gun with the new interaction system yet. ...customizable than ever before. Is there an animation on it? Default item actions that let you keep your customizations exactly how you want them. No animation? Okay. A new shopping interface that streamlines the experience so you can get what you want and go. And new looting screens to improve your alternate and more violent shopping experience. And speaking of which, there's the looting screen's really good. And the one thing that I keep pointing out that nobody ever points out is that the looting of med pens ammo uh a lot of things in the new looting screen auto stack 
they auto stack in your backpack. I, I don't think a lot of people know that, but it auto stacks. There's lots of new improvements to the way you bring first person murder death kill to your fellow citizens in the verse, including scope magnification updates, ammo repooling and backpack reloading, ADS tuning, and the new dynamic crosshair on specialized helmets so you can fire straight from the hip in game and not just from the comfort of your YouTube comments. I said the dynamic crosshair is the one I, I like the least. And your first person life doesn't end there because Alpha 323 allows you to take the fight to zero G with the newly revamped EVA mechanics. Number one, best, most improved feature, EVA. Number one most improved feature, not even close, not even a question. It is a billion times better. Changing the way you traverse the verse outside your spacecraft and vehicle. And speaking of your spacecraft or vehicles, the Alpha 323 season also includes new ways to house how dare you do this? There's no way. They called it a season, first off, which is hilarious. Just pre-recorded, maybe. But the, like, what is wrong with, with failing? What is wrong with just being like, it didn't make it? But it'll be, we're hoping that it'll be soon. Right? That's the part that bothers me. It's, it's relentless. Everything is fine. Right? Load and launch your ships with the new personal persistent hangars coming to Art Corp, Hurston, Microtech, Season and Orison in a 323 X patch this quarter which also includes item banks to grab your stuff, vehicle platforms to raise your ships, and freight elevators to load them before takeoff. I think it's I think it's pretty shitty to show this, but at the same time they're I don't know. Like I just look at it this way. The the weird thing for me is I look at it this way. 323 0 is like this mix of removing so much quality of life because there's tons of instability and problems and adding instability, right? Or, or adding st uh, quality of life through Moby Glass, EVA, all that other stuff, right? That's 323.0. This can be its pa a patch on its own. You could call this 324 if they just put this in, in my mind. So maybe that's like the mental block that I'm having here. And I'm like, why are they showing this as if it's this? When it's like, to me, it's something totally separate. Of course, once you take off, you'll find a new way to fly with master modes and a new way to fight with precision targeting and weapon mountain gimbal changes, meaning space combat's got its next evolution in Alpha 323. Major weapon systems. Huge changes there, But what if obviously. flying in the PU isn't enough? Or you simply want a safe place to practice the changes? Well, there's a whole host of new maps and experimental modes in Arena Commander 323 that we covered here in detail just last week. Then back in the Persistent Universe and down planets. Damn, their frame rate's really good there. Side, you'll find the new distribution centers with a variety of mission and gameplay opportunities for all manner of play styles. And the added dangers of the American Copian, Star Citizen's first fauna being added to Alpha 323. And how are the Merricks dangerous? Just wait until they add poop mechanics. Then there's also exciting new technological improvements like our initial implementation of Vulcan. New DLSS, FSR. This shit looks sick. There's, there's no denying how good this our stuff Our TSR works. upscaling. And the new water rendering and simulation tech that will make Star Citizen look even better than ever before. And then under the hood, with the new replication layer split in 323, players no longer connect directly to the game servers and instead to the hybrid service, 
which hosts the replication layer, which then itself maintains the state of the game. This now the the issue here though is that they still haven't resolved all the issues around missions, and it is a it is a pretty fucking horrible experience when it recovers. It is. But it recovers. You're in the same place. It is like actually a better experience than what you had before, but not by much right now. So this is one of those features where them, the development studio, is really excited for what it means, but us, the players, don't really see the value of it completely yet. Um, and that happens a lot with them on the tech side. Is they're like, this is an incredible feat. And it's like, okay, um, doesn't feel that way to us just yet. Now means that the loss of a server can be recovered from without the players being disconnected from the game or losing their progress and sets the stage for- That's so disingenuous there. That is so insanely, like, that has never happened to anybody ever. Mi the best I had was a minute and 30 seconds, which is awesome. If that's their intention, that would be amazing. For multiple game servers sharing a single hybrid replication. And and that's the that's the kind of shit that I cannot handle from them. Is obviously they can't show that it takes a minute and 30 seconds. Does it say it's sped up anywhere? It doesn't say sped up anywhere on the screen. Yes, there it is. Server recover at plus at, at 1300 speed. There you go. Not disingenuous at all, but that I didn't notice it at first. Get from the game or losing so their progress go. and sets the stage they for multiple a, game servers sharing a single hybrid a replication pass, layer in the server. That's very marketing. Server mesh coming online with Alpha 4.0. I think that should have been much bigger. So all in all, there's uh, more things in Alpha 3.20. That's a, a, a gripe that doesn't matter. Three than you can shake a stick at but there's actually even more, as this branch not only includes all the hangar and cargo improvements we discussed earlier, it also contains the next iteration of Invictus Launch Week, which is actually two weeks. Chat, there's seven minutes left in this because video. Because we're all super extra here, and we'll introduce a handful of new ships and vehicles folks have been waiting for, as well as one straight to flyable that's available with 323 launch. So let's learn oh, more from ad. John, Ben, and Alberto. Yeah. How much is this thing gonna be? How much is the Knox? The Mirai Pulse is Mirai's entry into the ground gravlev bike uh, category. Is a new uh, racing vehicle from Mirai. Um, it kind of builds on um, some of their kind of core values as a, a brand of MISC, focusing more on performance. It I'm not going to lie. I feel like they, I said this yesterday. Grav Royale is, is not fun. And I feel like Grav Royale was only made because they were making this. It takes a lot of inspiration, should we say, from the, the Razor and really kind of shrinks that kind of thrill of speed down. Glad it was. So the role of grav lev vehicles in the game, and especially hover bikes, it allows you to, uh, you've got a mission in mind, perhaps you don't want to risk bringing your ship or larger vehicle uh, right up to it. It allows you to park some distance away, out of radar range, out of line of sight, and then infiltrate stealthily, speedily towards the target location. Nox is 45. That's interesting, okay. Because this vehicle goes as fast as the Knox. And of course, as... Uh, does does John Crew know, though, that Gravelet vehicles are targeted by turrets? I don't think he knows that. Features like weather comes online and more diverse and hazardous biomes, such as heavily dense forests. Gravelet vehicles, fixed? bikes will become more useful as That's ways awesome. to get closer to your target without damaging ships. The Pulse is our smallest ground vehicle. It was a intentional design choice to make something as small and compact 
and as fast as possible. In 323, bunker turrets no longer target bikes. Sometimes sales are good, chat. Sometimes sales are good. And Mirai is a brand sort of fits that <laughs> performance ideology. W it needs to be small. It needs to be small, fast, <laughs> agile, and really that just kind of gives us a much greater opportunity of how the players can really experience that, that sense of speed um, on one of our, our ground vehicles. So the Pulse comes in two flavors. We've got the base version, which comes uh, equipped with a custom laser Gatling on the front. The gun is badass. Aiming with it, not as much. And then you have the LX, which is the dedicated racing version. It loses that front weapon, replaces it with a big intake. You get extra thrusters. So uh, out of all the Gravlev bikes, it is one of the most agile there. I think it is the most agile from uh, the reason what people were doing. The reason it's so small and compact is we wanted it to have the most compatibility with all of our other vehicles in game. So by being compact, it allows you to pretty much stuff it into every single other vehicle in existence in the game. Size-wise, nice. I think it's just over two and a half meters in length, so it is what? tiny. So in some perspective, it's um, That's a, a tiny bit longer than two it? SCU of cargo, so it is very small. I'm sure there will be <laughs> one or two vehicles out there where it doesn't fit in, uh, maybe such as the MPUV, but across the board, it's designed to get in uh, a lot of other vehicles. That's so impressive, actually. My favorite thing about the Pulse series is just the way we've integrated all the components together into that incredibly tight chassis. We tried to kind of fuse the idea of a sports bike, but almost, I think they're called like naked bikes. Um, so we wanted it to feel still quite aggressive and quite kind of chunky, almost like a... Like a Some of you guys will not be excited about this, but this green one, I'm a, I don't like the color or anything. I do kind of like the way it looks. Um, the HUD was a little busted in PTU, but the the ship itself, I love Gravlev Racing. And this is the Gravlev Racing, like, it is the, the ship now, along with the Nox. I think they go the same speed. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. We have custom lobbies. We have Gravlev Racing, all this stuff. I cannot wait. I just realized I'm not in the Star Citizen directory. I'm in the Manor Lords directory right now. I'm sorry, anybody playing Manor Lords. There we go. Bobber, um, but we kind sorry, of really man. wanted that yeah, sleekness that Mirai and the, the brand as a whole kind of is known for. One of the, I guess, biggest kind of challenges that our, um, like Alberto and the concept team really had to work on, which then turned our production artists and, and kind of gave them a few things to scratch their head against is really fitting all of the, the ship items and the components into a vehicle of this size. Thank you, Mead. As we never did anything so small, new problems come along. I decided to take the same approach of a motorbike. Damn. We tried to... Not gonna lie, that concept art is awesome. We tried to insert most of the components in what will be the fuel tank. And with this approach, we kept the same shape, the same main shape uh, of a motorbike. So we have Thank very fluid first. and soft shapes, palindromal, which means that you can flip it and it looks kind of the same. And then we added the front part just to connect the semiotic of the racing vehicles to this one. We were really tight to the size because it can fit in a container and that created a huge challenge with how the components move. It can fit into a container. That sounds like it was a design brief idea. Do you hear that? I'm going to hold on to that. And I'm going to read into it way too much. But I'm going to hold on to that one. Move when you actually have to expose them. So... That dictated actually the shape we ended up with, and I'm really happy with the final result at because some point. at least it was. Uh, you couldn't say probably that inside such a small vehicle there are so many components. Compared to our Leo other Gravlev ground vehicles, the Pulse is it trades durability for speed and agility. So compared to say like the Drag, they weren't selling it there. Whoever was racing that is slow as shit. Can fly and the hover quad, which are relatively tanky not as good there. The Nox is more tense and definitely bigger. Mirai tries to simplify things a bit, 
less is more. We try to have a different approach compared to most of racing vehicles and communicate speed through mass and not through aerodynamics. Although we keep aerodynamics in pace, uh, consideration brother. for this kind of stuff. In terms of the Nox and the X1, it is right up there in speed and agility. So they all trade different speed attributes in terms of straight line speed, cornering speed, rotational velocities. I I'm really curious what kind of times we're going to do on Clio Islands with this thing, because we were getting, I was getting into like the 28s, 27s per second on, on or per lap, seconds per lap. But because this thing can turn tighter, I'm curious. And the bespoke weapon on the front of the base model is our first laser gatling in the game. Uh, so we're looking forward to see how that performs. That's so ridiculous, dude. That is so ridiculous. So that's the Pulse coming online in 323. Two variants of it. Looking forward to seeing all the different scenarios you're going to get it into. Did I say it's small? <laughs> it's really, really small. <laughs> and goes really, really fast. Okay, that's good. See the memes coming. <laughs> <laughs> so what did we learn this week? Well, hopefully we were reminded of all the great work the combined Star Citizen and Squadron 42 teams have been working on that make their way to the Persistent Universe in Alpha 323. Yes, please don't forget that part because it's gonna suck. Let's not forget that part. I have to remind myself of that part quite a bit. It's gonna be shit though. It's gonna be shit. But I try to remind myself that there is a lot of good that happens with it, but it is not, like I am just so uninterested in the patch. So uninterested in the patch. I've never been more uninterested in a patch in a while. That like any and every other feature in Star Citizen, the work doesn't stop here and will continue to iterate and evolve in subsequent releases. And that the Mirai Pulse is a teeny in, tiny cover bite that can fit into all- But if they wipe, I think I'm gonna salvage a lot. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a lot of salvaging. All sorts of places and may just be John Griffith's and James Kay's worst nightmares when players try to squeeze them deep down into the distribution centers. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for letting us share the process of game development with you, and we'll see you all here next week. No fun at the end, so that's it. That was ISC 323. I, I think it's weird that they did the cargo thing there. Outside of that, it was sort of whatever. Um, yes, I saw Zylo's post. We'll, we'll, why not go over that now a little bit? Um, I will just do this and remove the month report tag. Um, I don't know who he's responding to, but I'm assuming it's somebody complaining, um, about 323 is not ready for release. And he says, totally valid, but I'd like to shed some light on our perspective. We intend for 2024 to be a big year for Star Citizen, and we're all about keeping that momentum going strong. So it's a tricky balance, though, moving forward without sacrificing the quality of the experience. Sometimes introducing a new feature can introduce new problems. That's why we're talking about a bit more time with things like the hangar and cargo, which is great. I'm glad they did that. This isn't about hitting the brakes, though. As always, our teams are all hands on deck, focused on addressing issues as fast as humanly possible. You might see a few bumps in the road with 323, but we are certainly not stopping there. You should expect plenty of follow-up pop fixes and improvements as we push forward towards the big milestones ahead. 4.0, 1.0, and beyond. It is it's important to remember that every level of Star Citizen serves as a testing environment. And while issues are often found in earlier phases, root causes and solutions are often best discovered with the wide stress testing of a full live alpha resource. This is the part that makes me want my head to explode. We have a PTU, an EPTU, a testing uh, environment. So live will not have to be the stability test. And we've talked about this in countless posts from people on why they're doing it, but you went to Evo. You, 
the the thing that this all tells me is is that the billion of billions of devs coming over from Squadron Forty Two aren't improving the pace of things because they basically doubled what would be in a patch but delivered ha half of it or it half baked. So we're basically getting the same amount of content. So this is for me shows the concern of them coming over and not being able to deliver. And the craziest part about this is these features didn't come out of nowhere. They've been worked on for a really long time and they still were unpolished. Right. And obviously we we've heard and recognized the taking something from a single player game to a multiplayer game is not that easy, but it's probably easier than building it from the ground up. Probably. Maybe it's not. Don't know. But for me, I share a little concern that the pace of Star Citizen's development is not going to pr improve. Even though Squadron 42 is feature complete. So the big selling feature of CitizenCon at this moment is showing to be bullshit. At this moment. But that's it. Don't know for sure. Maybe the next patch will be better. Who knows? But at this moment, that's what it feels like. All right. And and the hope was that it was going to be better. Grumpy Ice has told you so. Grumpy, what? Like, great. Congratulations. You know, you were right about the worst possible scenario. Like, this isn't something to be proud of. Right? This sucks. Uh, it's vital that we get Alpha 323 to the live environment as soon as possible to discover every cause and solution we can, while also enduring, ensuring that we stay on track for future milestones, as delaying too long can create a ripple effect. The team is determined to get things into a great place, and everyone's participation and reports have been tremendously helpful in that pursuit. It wasn't ready from the start. It wasn't ready from the start. Um, I think the momentum means the hype train here, though, uh, unfortunately. But <sighs> yeah, there we are. 323, everybody. 